Hi, welcome to I-25. My name is Lorraine and I'm going to be your teacher today. The topics of today's class are We are going to start with a grammar lesson. Are you aware of the countable and uncountable nouns? ¿Saben ustedes algo de los sustantivos contables e incontables? Basically, they are used for things that we can count or we cannot count. Básicamente, son utilizados para cosas que podemos contar o no podemos contar. A noun that can be counted is called a countable noun. Un sustantivo que se puede contar es un sustantivo contable. For example, flowers, man, or cats. Por ejemplo, gatos. I can say I have one cat or two cats, three, four, fifty cats. With that in mind, we can talk about indefinite articles. Con eso en mente, podemos hablar de los artículos indeterminados. We have a and an. Both mean the same things, but we need to know the rule to use them. Ambos significan lo mismo, pero debemos saber la regla para usarlos. First, we only use these articles when the noun is singular. Now, we use the a before the noun when said noun starts with a consonant. Primero, solo usamos estos artículos cuando el sustantivo es singular. Ahora, utilizamos a antes de un sustantivo que inicia con una consonante. For example, por ejemplo. I have a book I want to read. Tengo un libro que quiero leer. She has a chair. Ella tiene una silla. Now, we use an when the noun starts with a vowel. Usamos an cuando el sustantivo inicia con una vocal. I want an apple. Quiero una manzana. He has an ice cream cone. Él tiene un helado. Before we end with the countable nouns, let's see how to use them in questions. We use how many to ask for the amount of something. Para las preguntas, debemos de usar how many para preguntar por la cantidad de un sustantivo. Su significado, cuántos. For example, how many cones of ice cream are you going to eat? Now, we are going to talk about the uncountable nouns. Ahora vamos a hablar de los sustantivos incontables. Those are the ones that we cannot count. Y son los que no podemos contar. Because they are too small, or they have a different shape, or they are liquids. Porque son o muy pequeños, tienen una forma indeterminada o son líquidos. Let's see one example. We cannot say, I want two milks. Why? Because we have to say something about the milk. What? How much of the milk? To express the quantity of an uncountable noun, we have to use the following expressions. Para expresar las cantidades de los sustantivos incontables, tenemos que utilizar las siguientes expresiones. Some, a lot of, any. And for questions, we use how much and how many. Por ejemplo. Hello. Hey, I'm going to make a pie following your recipe. Do you know how much sugar do I have to put in the mix? Oh, you have to put a lot of sugar, probably two cups. Wow, okay. Do I need any milk? Uh, yeah, um, not much. One cup would be fine. Well, thanks, buddy. There. Now you know how to use the countable and uncountable nouns. Now we are going to learn about the comparative adjectives. Ahora aprenderemos de los comparativos. We use comparatives when we want to compare one thing from the other. 
Utilizamos los comparativos cuando queremos comparar una cosa sobre la otra. In order to use it, we just have to add an ER to the adjective. Para usarlo, solo tenemos que agregar ER al final del adjetivo. Por ejemplo, older, smaller, cooler. Quick rule. If the adjective ends in Y, we have to drop the Y and add I-E-R for grammatical purposes. Regla rápida. Si el adjetivo termina con una Y, tenemos que quitar la Y y agregar I latina E-R. Pretty, prettier, happy, happier. In order to make sentences, we have to use the word then. Para poder crear enunciados, tenemos que usar la palabra then, que es el equivalente a que. Por ejemplo, This dog is happier than the other dog. Este perro está más feliz que el otro. Luisa is smaller than Karen. Luisa es más pequeña que Karen. She is prettier than her friend. Ella está más bonita que su amiga. There are also the superlative adjectives that we use them when we want to say that something is superior or lower from another thing. Utilizamos los superlativos para indicar cuando algo es superior o más bajo que otra cosa. As in the comparative adjectives, we just have to add EST. And when the adjective ends in a Y, we drop the Y and add IEST. Así como en los comparativos, aquí también tenemos que agregar EST. Y si el adjetivo termina en Y, quitamos la Y y agregamos I latina EST. Por ejemplo, old, oldest, pretty, prettiest, close, closest, happy, happiest. As in the comparative, we use the words then, in the superlatives, we use the word the. Así como en los comparativos utilizamos la palabra than, en los superlativos utilizamos la palabra the. Por ejemplo, Thomas is the tallest boy in the soccer team. Thomas es el chico más alto en el equipo de soccer. Sharon is the oldest girl in the house. Sharon es la chica más grande de la casa. We just going to, to talk about our future plans, especially if the plan was prepared before the moment of speaking. Usamos el going to o voy a para hablar de planes futuros, especialmente si hablamos de planes hechos antes del momento en el que estamos hablando. Now, we are going to check the structure to make a sentence. Veamos la estructura. As usual, first we have the pronouns. Then we add the verb to be in its present form, followed by going to, and then the verb. Iniciamos con los pronombres. Después agregamos el verbo to be en presente, seguido del going to y el verbo. For the negative form, the structure is the same form we have been working for the past classes. Para la estructura en negativo, utilizamos el mismo formato utilizado en las clases pasadas. We have the pronouns, then the verb to be, in present form, and of course the not, before the going to, and the verb. Tenemos los pronombres, después el verbo to be, en presente, y por supuesto el not, antes del going to y el verbo. Last but not least, in the interrogative form, we have to place the correct form of the auxiliary verb to be at the beginning of the sentence, then the subject or pronoun plus going to. Por último, pero no menos importante, es la forma interrogativa. Colocamos el auxiliar del verbo to be correspondiente al principio de la oración, después el sujeto o pronombre más el going to. I'm going to buy a goldfish. 
Voy a comprar un test dorado. He's going to give spicy food. Él va a dar comida condimentada. She's not going to eat those chips. Ella no se va a comer esas papas. Are they going to speak at the conference? ¿Van ellos a hablar en la conferencia? I'm not going to stay quiet. Yo no me quedaré callado. Now we are going to look at a new topic, the present perfect. Ahora vamos a ver el presente perfecto. We use the present perfect to show a link between the past and the present. Utilizamos el presente perfecto para mostrar una unión entre el pasado y el presente. In contrast with the simple past, the present perfect indicates that something started in the past, but it has not concluded. En contraste con el pasado simple, el presente perfecto indica que empezó una acción en el pasado, pero que aún no ha concluido. I have worked hard for three months. He trabajado duro por tres meses. If you notice, we say when the action started, but don't say when it ended. Si se fijan, decimos cuando empezó la acción, no cuando terminó. Let's go and check the structure. All right? Vamos a checar la estructura, ¿vale? As usual, we first have the subject. Then we add have or has plus the verb in the past participle and the complement of the sentence. Como es usual, iniciamos con los pronombres. Después, agregamos el verbo auxiliar have o has más el verbo en pasado participio para finalizar con el resto del enunciado. When it comes to negative, we use the subject, the auxiliary verb, have or has, plus the word not, and the past participle of the verb and the rest of the sentence. Cuando se trata del negativo, iniciamos con el sujeto. Agregamos el auxiliar have o has, más la palabra not, seguido del verbo en pasado participio y el resto de la oración. In the interrogative form, we have to start with the auxiliary have or has, then the subject plus the past participle of the verb and the complement of the sentence. En la forma interrogativa, tenemos que empezar con el auxiliar have o has, después el sujeto más el verbo en pasado participio y el complemento del enunciado. Now, let's go with the examples. She has lived here all her life. Ella ha vivido aquí toda su vida. They have worked here since they got their degree. Ellos han trabajado aquí desde que les dieron su diploma. Has he been to Canada? Él ha estado en Canadá. We haven't been to the beach yet. Nosotros no hemos estado en la playa. Aún. Okay, so we have arrived to the end of this class. On behalf of I-25, we thank you and I also remember you that you have to go through the exercises before you pass to the next lesson. Have a nice day.